An extremophile from Latin extremis meaning extreme and Greek philia philia meaning love is an organism that thrives in physically or geochemically extreme conditions that are detrimental to most life on Earth. In contrast, organisms that live in more moderate environments may be termed mesophiles or neutrophiles. Topic: <laughs> Characteristics In the 1980s and 1990s, biologists found that microbial life has great flexibility for surviving in extreme environments, niches that are acidic or extraordinarily hot, for example, that would be completely inhospitable to complex organisms. Some scientists even concluded that life may have begun on Earth in hydrothermal vents far under the ocean's surface, according to astrophysicist Sten Sigurdsson. There are viable bacterial spores that have been found that are 40 million years old on Earth, and we know they're very hardened to radiation. Some bacteria were found living in the cold and dark in a lake buried a half mile deep under the ice in Antarctica, and in the Marianas Trench, the deepest place in Earth's oceans. Some microorganisms have been found thriving inside rocks up to 1,900 feet 580 meters below the seafloor under 8,500 feet 2, meters of ocean off the coast of the northwestern United States. According to one of the researchers, "...you can find microbes everywhere. They're extremely adaptable to conditions, and survive wherever they are." A key to extremophile adaptation is their amino acid composition, affecting their protein folding ability under particular conditions. Topic: Classifications. There are many classes of extremophiles that range all around the globe, each corresponding to the way its environmental niche differs from mesophilic conditions. These classifications are not exclusive. Many extremophiles fall under multiple categories and are classified as polyextremophiles. For example, organisms living inside hot rocks deep under Earth's surface are thermophilic and barophilic such as Thermococcus barophilus. A polyextremophile living at the summit of a mountain in the Atacama Desert might be a radioresistant xerophile, a psychrophile, and an oligotroph. Polyextremophiles are well known for their ability to tolerate both high and low pH levels. Topic: <laughs> Terms. Acidophile An organism with optimal growth at pH levels of 3 or below alkalophile. An organism with optimal growth at pH levels of 9 or above anaerobe. An organism that does not require oxygen for growth such as Spinolauricus cinsia. Two subtypes exist, facultative anaerobe and obligate anaerobe. A facultative anaerobe can tolerate anaerobic and aerobic conditions, however, an obligate anaerobe would die in the presence of even trace levels of oxygen. Cryptoendolith An organism that lives in microscopic spaces within rocks, such as pores between aggregate grains. These may also be called endolith, a term that also includes organisms populating fissures, aquifers, and faults filled with groundwater in the deep subsurface. Halophile An organism requiring at least 0.2 m concentrations of salt sodium chloride for growth, hypothermophile. An organism that can thrive at temperatures above 80 degrees Celsius 176 degrees Fahrenheit, such as those found in hydrothermal systems hypolith. An organism that lives underneath rocks in cold deserts, lithoatotroph. An organism, usually bacteria, whose sole source of carbon is carbon dioxide and exergonic inorganic oxidation, chemolithotrophs, such as Nitrosomonas aeropea. These organisms are capable of deriving energy from reduced mineral compounds like pyrites, and are active in geochemical cycling and the weathering of parent bedrock to form soil. Metallotolerant capable of tolerating high levels of dissolved heavy metals in solution, such as copper, cadmium, arsenic, and zinc. 
Examples include Ferroplasma sp, Capriavidus metallogurans and GFAJ1, oligotroph An organism capable of growth in nutritionally limited environments, osmophile An organism capable of growth in environments with a high sugar concentration, piezophile also referred to as barophile, is an organism that lives optimally at high pressures such as those deep in the ocean or underground, common in the deep terrestrial subsurface, as well as in oceanic trenches. Piezophilic organisms live under conditions of extreme pressure. High pressures can cause proteins to fold into themselves. Piezophiles have less large bulky amino acids that would take up space and prevent the other amino acids from coming close enough to create the reinforced area around the core of proteins. Polyextremophile A polyextremophile fo ancient Latin, Greek for affection for many extremes is an organism that qualifies as an extremophile under more than one category, psychrophile, cryophile, an organism capable of survival, growth or reproduction at temperatures of minus 15 degrees Celsius 5 degrees Fahrenheit or lower for extended periods, common in cold soils, permafrost, polar ice, cold ocean water, and in or under alpine snowpack. Psychrophilic organisms live in environments at temperature below minus 15 degrees Celsius. Low temperatures cause the kinetic energy and motion within proteins to slow, which prevents them from functioning properly. Cryophiles proteins have adapted their amino acid composition to live in cold conditions and mitigate this threat. They have a high amount of glycine amino acids, the small size of which allows for more flexibility within the protein once it is folded. Psychrophiles also have a low concentration of charged amino acids, hydrophobic nonpolar amino acids, and proline residues. The low amount of charged amino acids reduces the amount of interactions between them, while the reduced amount of hydrophobic nonpolar amino acids allows the nonpolar core of the protein to be smaller. Psychrophilic proteins have a small amount of proline amino acids because they cause a rigid structure. These adaptations allow psychrophilic proteins to be more flexible so they do not freeze under cold conditions. Radioresistant Organisms resistant to high levels of ionizing radiation, most commonly ultraviolet radiation. This category also includes organisms capable of resisting nuclear radiation, thermophile, an organism that can thrive at temperatures between 45 to 122 degrees Celsius 113 to 252 degrees Fahrenheit. Normally high temperatures cause proteins to unfold and prevent them from functioning. Thermophilic proteins have adapted their proteins to cope with these conditions. They have a higher amount of cysteine amino acids, which form disulfide bonds once the protein has folded. These disulfide bonds cause the protein to fold up tighter and become more rigid. They also have more charged amino acids, both positive and negative, that interact with each other to increase how rigid the protein is. When proteins become more rigid they are less likely to unfold due to high temperature. Even one extra disulfide bond can raise the temperature at which the protein folds by 6 degrees Celsius. These adapted proteins allow thermophilic extremophiles to survive at high temperatures. Thermoacidophile Combination of thermophile and acidophile that prefer temperatures of 70 to 80 degrees Celsius and pH between 2 and 3 zerophile An organism that can grow in extremely dry, desiccating conditions, this type is exemplified by the soil microbes of the Atacama Desert. Topic. In astrobiology Astrobiology is the study of the origin, evolution, distribution, and future of life in the universe, extraterrestrial life and life on Earth. Astrobiology makes use of physics, chemistry, astronomy, solar physics, biology, molecular biology, ecology, planetary science, geography, and geology to investigate the possibility of life on other worlds and help recognize biospheres that might be different from that on Earth. 
Astrobiologists are particularly interested in studying extremophiles, as their habitats may be analogous to conditions on other planets. For example, analogous deserts of Antarctica are exposed to harmful UV radiation, low temperature, high salt concentration and low mineral concentration. These conditions are similar to those on Mars. Therefore, finding viable microbes in the subsurface of Antarctica suggests that there may be microbes surviving in endolithic communities and living under the Martian surface. Research indicates it is unlikely that Martian microbes exist on the surface or at shallow depths, but may be found at subsurface depths of around 100 meters. Recent research carried out on extremophiles in Japan involved a variety of bacteria, including Escherichia coli and Paracoccus denitrificans, being subject to conditions of extreme gravity. The bacteria were cultivated while being rotated in an ultracentrifuge at high speeds corresponding to 403,627 grams i.e. 403,627 times the gravity experienced on Earth. Paracoccus denitrificans was one of the bacteria which displayed not only survival but also robust cellular growth under these conditions of hyperacceleration which are usually found only in cosmic environments, such as on very massive stars or in the shock waves of supernovas. Analysis showed that the small size of prokaryotic cells is essential for successful growth under hypergravity. The research has implications on the feasibility of panspermia. On the 26th of April 2012, scientists reported that lichen survived and showed remarkable results on the adaptation capacity of photosynthetic activity within the simulation time of 34 days under Martian conditions in the Mars Simulation Laboratory (MSL) maintained by the German Aerospace Center (DLR). On the 29th of April 2013, scientists at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute funded by NASA, reported that, during spaceflight on the International Space Station, microbes seem to adapt to the space environment in ways not observed on Earth, and in ways that can lead to increases in growth and virulence. On 19 May 2014, scientists announced that numerous microbes, like Tersicoccus phoenicius, may be resistant to methods usually used in spacecraft assembly clean rooms. It's not currently known if such resistant microbes could have withstood space travel and are present on the Curiosity rover now on the planet Mars. On the 20th of August 2014, scientists confirmed the existence of microorganisms living half a mile below the ice of Antarctica. On September 2015, scientists from CNR National Research Council of Italy reported that S. Soflataricus was able to survive under Martian radiation at a wavelength that was considered extremely lethal to most bacteria. This discovery is significant because it indicates that not only bacterial spores, but also growing cells can be remarkably resistant to strong UV radiation. On June 2016, scientists from Brigham Young University conclusively reported that endospores of Bacillus subtilis were able to survive high speed impacts up to 299 plus or minus 28 meters per second, extreme shock, and extreme deceleration. They pointed out that this feature might allow endospores to survive and to be transferred between planets by traveling within meteorites or by experiencing atmosphere disruption. Moreover, they suggested that the landing of spacecraft may also result in interplanetary spore transfer, given that spores can survive high-velocity impact while ejected from the spacecraft onto the planet's surface. This is the first study which reported that bacteria can survive in such high-velocity impact. However, the lethal impact speed is unknown, and further experiments should be done by introducing higher-velocity impact to bacterial endospores. Examples <laughs> 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 New subtypes of files are identified frequently and the subcategory list for extremophiles is always growing. For example, microbial life lives in the liquid asphalt lake, Pitch Lake. Research indicates that extremophiles inhabit the asphalt lake in populations ranging between 106 to 107 cells per gram. 
Likewise, until recently boron tolerance was unknown but a strong borophile was discovered in bacteria. With the recent isolation of Bacillus boronophilus, borophiles came into discussion. Studying these borophiles may help illuminate the mechanisms of both boron toxicity and boron deficiency. Topic: Industrial uses. The thermoalkalophilic catalase, which initiates the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water, was isolated from an organism, Thermus brocchianus, found in Yellowstone National Park by Idaho National Laboratory researchers. The catalase operates over a temperature range from 30 degrees Celsius to over 94 degrees Celsius and a pH range from 6 to 10. This catalase is extremely stable compared to other catalases at high temperatures and pH. In a comparative study, the T. brocchianus catalase exhibited a half-life of 15 days at 80 degrees Celsius and pH 10 while a catalase derived from Aspergillus niger had a half-life of 15 seconds under the same conditions. The catalase will have applications for removal of hydrogen peroxide in industrial processes such as pulp and paper bleaching, textile bleaching, food pasteurization, and surface decontamination of food packaging, DNA modifying enzymes such as TAC DNA polymerase and some bacillus enzymes used in clinical diagnostics and starch liquefaction are produced commercially by several biotechnology companies. Topic. DNA transfer Over 65 prokaryotic species are known to be naturally competent for genetic transformation, the ability to transfer DNA from one cell to another cell followed by integration of the donor DNA into the recipient cell's chromosome. Several extremophiles are able to carry out species-specific DNA transfer, as described below. However, it is not yet clear how common such a capability is among extremophiles. The bacterium Deinococcus radiodurans is one of the most radioresistant organisms known. This bacterium can also survive cold, dehydration, vacuum and acid and is thus known as a polyextremophile. D. radiodurans is competent to perform genetic transformation. Recipient cells are able to repair DNA damage in donor transforming DNA that had been UV irradiated as efficiently as they repair cellular DNA when the cells themselves are irradiated. The extreme thermophilic bacterium Thermus thermophilus and other related thermus species are also capable of genetic transformation. Halobacterium vulcanii, an extreme halophilic saline tolerant archaeon, is capable of natural genetic transformation. Cytoplasmic bridges are formed between cells that appear to be used for DNA transfer from one cell to another in either direction. Sulfolobus sulfataricus and Sulfolobus acidocaldarius are hypothermophilic archaea. Exposure of these organisms to the DNA damaging agents UV irradiation, bleomycin or mitomycin C induces species specific cellular aggregation. UV-induced cellular aggregation of S. acidocaldarius mediates chromosomal marker exchange with high frequency. Recombination rates exceed those of uninduced cultures by up to three orders of magnitude. Frolls et al. and a John et al. hypothesized that cellular aggregation enhances species-specific DNA transfer between sulfolobus cells in order to repair damaged DNA by means of homologous recombination. Van Wolfer and Al. noted that this DNA exchange process may be crucial under DNA damaging conditions such as high temperatures. It has also been suggested that DNA transfer in sulfolobus may be an early form of sexual interaction similar to the more well-studied bacterial transformation systems that involve species-specific DNA transfer leading to homologous recombinational repair of DNA damage and see transformation genetics. Extracellular membrane vesicles MVs might be involved in DNA transfer between different hypothermophilic archaeal species. It has been shown that both plasmids and viral genomes can be transferred via MVs. 
Notably, a horizontal plasmid transfer has been documented between hypothermophilic thermococcus and methanocordococcus species, respectively belonging to the orders Thermococcales and Methanococcales. <laughs> See also